this video, I want to talk about deformation um, in members uh, with a given section property, um, given geometry, and under a given loading condition, um, we can find the deformation in, in a member of really any shape, whether it's circular or rectangular or, or a square. Um, so if we're given this rod here with a length L and loading P, uh, with some cross-sectional area A. So this is the cross-sectional area. Um, and also, if we're given E, which is Young's modulus, this is also known as um, modulus of elasticity. Elasticity. So basically, what uh, Young's modulus means is um, it's a measure of the stiffness of the material. So we can use this following equation to find the deformation of this member. Um, so the deformation or del is equal to P, which is the loading, the length divided by. Young's modulus times the cross-sectional area. So the deformation is going to look something like this. This might be a little bit exaggerated, but so each of the each of these deformation is going to be del over two, and the sum of these two is going to give you del. So. Let's do a simple example to start off. So example one. Okay, so let's say we were given a square bar. And this is two meters long. And we have a tensile loading of two hundred kilonewtons. Okay. And the cross sectional area and the cross sectional dimension is zero point zero one meter square. And our Young's modulus is given as two hundred gigapascals. And we want to find the deformation in this member. So we can use the equation given above PL over EA. So we know that our P, or our loading, is 200 kilonewtons. The length is two meters. Um, our Young's modulus uh, are given in units of gigapascals, which this equals 200 times 10 to the ninth pascals, or newtons per meter squared. But here we can change this to kilonewtons to cancel out uh, the kilonewton units in the numerator. So if we change this to kilonewtons, we would divide by a thousand. So this would be 200 times 10 to the 6 kilonewtons per meter squared. So we can put that in right here. 200 times 10 to the 6 kilonewtons per meter squared. And our cross-sectional area will be 0 0.01 uh, squared that's meter squared units. So we can start canceling our units and we're left with meters which is uh, which we know is going to be the units of length for uh, deformation. So if we punch this into a calculator we should get 0 0.02 meters for our deflection. 
So this means that on this side it's going to deflect 0 0.01 meter and then on this side likewise it's going to deflect 0 0.01 meter. So let's look at another example and that's a little bit more involved. Let's say we were given these two uh, aluminum rods joined at B of uh, different cross-sectional areas. Um, this first one uh, from A to B we'll, we'll say is 30 millimeters and from B to C this rod here we'll say is 50 millimeters. And given this 5,000 uh, newtons downward at A and this 30,000 newton upward at B, we're asked to find the deflection of point A and the deflection of point B. And we're given the dimensions here. The length from A to B is 1 meter, the length of B to C is 0.3 meters. And the Young's modulus of this aluminum rod is 75,000 megapascals. So the first thing that I would do is draw an axial force diagram because we, we're going to need to know um, the axial load in section AB. So if we made a cut, I'll use a different color. So if we made a cut here and somewhere between B and C, uh, we need to know the axial force in those sections. So again, the, I would say the easiest way is to draw an axial force diagram. So if I was envisioning this um, looking from left to right, we'll say I'll turn it over on the side and I'm looking at it like this. So let me redraw this. So if I'm looking at it like this. So I'll say this is A, B, C. Our 5,000 Newton is pointed to the right and our 30,000 is pointed to the left. So a sign convention for drawing axial force diagram is if it's pointed to the right it's negative and if, if an external force is pointing to the left it's positive. So I drew these dash lines here so we'll call this our zero line. So again if we're again envisioning, envisioning this setup in this left to right fashion that 5,000 newtons would be negative and it would stay at negative 5,000 newtons until we get to point B where now we have a loading of 30,000 newtons and that's pointing up which when we're looking horizontally that's pointing left so that's positive so we would add 30,000 newtons to our diagram so that would put us at positive 25,000 newtons and it would stay that way until we get to C and since everything's in static equilibrium um, it has to go back to zero. Um, so basically if we look at this diagram this cross-sectional cut it corresponds to basically this point and this point. I mean it could be you could have made a cut anywhere but it's 25 thousand from from B to C no matter where you cut and it's negative 5,000 newtons from A to B no matter where you cut. So this is a quick way of showing the internal uh, axial force uh, in the in the member. So we know that we want to find delta A and delta B. So delta A is basically going to be the deformation caused by the internal force in member BC plus the deformation caused by the internal for axial force in member AB in section AB. So this is going to be deformation in BC plus the deformation in 
A, B. Uh, for the deformation of point B, that is just going to be, since we're looking from the bottom top, that's just going to be the deformation in B, C. We don't care about what happens uh, in A, B, because we're only concerned up to this point B. So we can find each of these deformations individually and plug them into our uh, equation here. So del BC is going to be the loading or the axial force in BC plus the length of BC divided by Young's modulus and the cross-sectional area of BC. So again, when we look at our axial force diagram, in BC our uh, axial force is 25,000 newtons. These would be 25,000 newtons. Our length is 0.3 meters. Our Young's modulus is 75,000 megapascals, so that's this is equal to 75,000 times 10 to the 6 pascals, uh, which this is again newtons per meter squared. So since my all my units are in newtons and meters, we can keep them as 75,000 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared, or pascals, times the cross-sectional area, since this is a round rod, is going to be pi over 4 times the diameter squared, uh, so that's our cross-sectional area, and our diameter is uh, 50 millimeters, and this is equal to 0 0.05 meters. So again, it's going to be pi over 4 times the diameter uh, 0 0.05 squared. So if we plug all of this into a calculator, 0 0.0000509 meters. And I'm going to change this to millimeter units to get rid of some of these zeros. So we're going to multiply by a thousand and we'll get 0 0.0509 millimeters. And this is going to, the deformation, or this point B is going to uh, deform upwards. Um, since we chose uh, upwards as our positive direction, So since we ended up with a positive number, this is going to deflect or deform upwards. Um, for delta, or deformation of A, B, um, we're going to use the loading in member A, B, the length of A, B, divided by the Young's modulus times the cross-sectional area of A, B. So again, we look at our diagram, our axial loading in mem member AB is going to be negative 5,000. So negative 5,000 newtons. Our length of AB is 1 meter. Our Young's modulus is 75,000 times 10 to the 6 newtons per meter squared times the cross-sectional area is pi over 4 times the diameter squared which is uh, our diameter is 30 millimeters this equals to 0 0.03 meters so 0 0.03 meters squared the units are meters squared so if we plug this guy into the calculator, 
we're going to get a negative value because of our um, negative axial load. So this will be negative 0 0.0000. Nine four three meters. Again, if I convert this to millimeters, I multiply by a thousand, and I get negative zero point zero nine four three millimeters. And because it's negative, this is going to go downwards. Um, so our deflection at A is the sum of the deflection or the deformation of BC plus the deformation of AB. So the deformation of A is going to be uh, 0 0.0509 millimeters minus 0 0.0943 millimeters. And when you sum these up, you should get negative 0 0.0434 millimeters and this will be uh, downwards, mm -hmm. meaning in this original drawing, it's going to, this point A is going to end up somewhere down here, and this distance, this distance is going to be 0 0.09, or 0 0.0434 millimeters. For the deflection of B, it's just going to be um, this deformation of BC, which we found to be 0 0.0509 millimeters. So we don't have to do any extra computations there. And this is going to deform up. So in our drawing, that means this point B is going to end up somewhere up here. And basically, this distance is going to be 0 0.0509 millimeters. 